Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. Hope you're having a great summer. It's just about over, but if you want to finish up strong, check out Boink Bird's jumping video series. 50% off if you go there from my link and I guarantee you'll get it to be a better jumper. Now let's talk about the Utah Jazz and their offense because going through the summer league footage with Quinn Snyder as the new coach, we saw some interesting things, some encouraging things and some, you know, kind of meh. But I want to show you what we discovered and how it might help them with their current roster going forward in the NBA. We start out by looking at a familiar play called The Loop, made popular by Tony Parker and the Spurs. The Jazz had a wrinkle. Instead of a normal zipper cut, they have the wing backscreen the big man before receiving the pass. This triggers three screens for the point guard. Ideally, Burke would get open on the curl and score, but they have a nice flow into pick and roll. And while this set stagnates a bit, you could imagine Derek Favors popping to the elbow for the shot while Cantor cleans up down low. Almost every half-court set began with the point guard dribbling to the wing rather than a traditional guard forward pass. Here's another loop play which allows Exum to handle the ball on top. When he gets more comfortable, he can find ways to attack the mid-range. But they also want to flow into sideline screen and roll with Favors popping and Cantor going low. They also ran the loop for Exum, which allowed him to use his quickness and court vision to make this nifty bounce pass to the roll man. If the point guard is overplayed, he has the option of coming back up on the same side, which triggers a pin down on the weak side. This could enable a nice little two-man game between Hayward and Cantor or Favors. Dante Exum goes over the top of the screen, and this triggered a high screen to roll out on top, Another way to get either Exum or Gordon Hayward an opportunity to attack out on top. Here's a play that really caught my eye because it's such an old school play from the Celtics of the 60s. What I call the pinch post split, the ball starts with an entry pass to the elbow and the passer does a pinch post cut but then screens the wing as a split in front of the post. Gorgeous action that should get lots of shots when the defense rotates to help. When you run two players in a split in front of the high post, it's hard to defend, and as the defense usually gets in each other's way, it gives up an open shot. The Jazz also float into double ball screens across the top, which could allow Burke, Burks, and Exum some space to score, but they kept running it for a pop by the big man for a three. This simply won't happen with Favors and Cantor. And here's an example of your basic ho-hum pick and roll on top. I'm sure they'll run for Burke, Exum, and even Hayward. While I'd have liked to have seen more off-ball screens, they display good cutting and ball movement to get this drive and shot at the rim. The Jazz got into trouble with their basic motion, which got very stagnant and ineffective. Without an overabundance of talent, It'll be tough to consistently generate shots when you're relying on individuals to create something on their own off the bounce. Their basic action on the reverse is to set a double pin down on the weak side, which flows into a pick and roll with high-low action. Again, I can't see Favors being the stretch four who will pop out and consistently hit these jumpers. But it was encouraging to see Exum use those two screens to pop out on top and execute a shot fake two dribble pull up. What got me excited was how they ran motion into horns. After the double staggered screen, the second screener simply turns around while the big man on the right side cuts up to the elbow to get the horns alignment. This is exactly how the Spurs run it and you can see the beautiful timing and movement they get out of it. Here's another nice flow into horns but they'll need to tweak this in order to get shots that Favors can hit from mid-range, not the three. On this set, they twist the high posts before setting a ball screen for the point guard. It'd be easy to imagine Cantor screening the ball, then diving for low post position, and Favors popping to the top of the key to either shoot it or hit Cantor on his seal in front of the basket. This group, however, was happy to just space the floor and jack it up. Here's an option I like when the point guard passes to the high post, then cuts to the weak side corner. 
They get a double staggered curl from the man in the corner, then a pin down for the point guard into dribble pitch. This should open up tons of shots for everybody. Same play, but to the other side. And this time you can see how that double staggered weak side screen gets the man open on a curl right to the hoop. Again, when the two big men twist, essentially exchanging positions, this triggers the pick and roll option. Perhaps they get Hayward on the elbow and pop him out for some good looks at a three. And of course, against the bad defenses, there's always room to run a pinch post cut straight to the hoop for a nifty backdoor layup. And finally, this got me really excited to see the corner option of the triangle, where the pass to the corner triggers the passer getting a back screen from the center, who then turns to screen the ball handler. It's clear they're using the Spurs as a model, but their offense won't be great overnight. So there you have it, sports fans. Will Gordon Hayward finally evolve into a star player they've been hoping for and paying for? And will Derek Favors and Ennis Kanter mesh well together, play a full season together, and do some damage in their brutally tough Western Conference? They have some nice players. I like Burke and Burks. And uh, they just are a little bit not deep enough to compete with the upper echelon of the Western Conference. But I wouldn't be surprised if they're struggling along trying to get that eighth spot and make it exciting. So stay tuned for lots more. And don't forget, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel. We're a conversation. You win.